to you, Center Grove Church of Christ. We hope you're doing well today. We hope you had a productive day and we hope your families are doing good. Uh, we uh, hope and pray that you are staying fervent in your prayer life and uh, studying the word of God and keeping yourself strong in the Lord. Uh, tonight, Brother Andy Moss asked me to fill in for him. Uh, and how can I tell Brother Moss no? Um, and appreciate him for his confidence and in me to um, to teach this class tonight. I know there are capable brothers and, and talented brothers and uh, spiritual brothers who are able to do the same thing and I just appreciate him for that. Uh, thank him and his wife and all the saints there at uh, Center Grove who've been very warm to me and my family. We appreciate you guys so much and all those who come through the doors there at Center Grove. Uh, and uh, I'm excited about what God is going to do <clears throat> at Center Grove, but also uh, what he's going to do in our individual lives uh, as we grow and mature in Christ Jesus. On tonight, we're going to be looking into Acts chapter number four. I'm going to ask if you will please turn over there and we'll begin reading at verse number one, um, Acts chapter four and verse uh, number number one. Acts four, verse number one. And before we begin reading, let's go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for today. Father, we're thankful that you have blessed us again to be able to be here. We're thankful, Father God, that you are our God, our Father who loves us, who's patient with us, who's kind. And, and, and even we thankful, we're thankful. thankful for the chastisement that um, you put on us at sometimes, Lord God, because it is through those moments, Father God, we have learned to cling to you even more. We ask, Father, that you forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. And we ask that you will bless those families that are um, going through sickness right now. We pray that you will eradicate this disease um, that is plaguing this world. And we pray, Lord God, that when you do eradicate it, that we will uh, all with one voice praise and glorify you. We pray that you'll be with all the family members and all the Christians um, that may be struggling in other areas of their lives. Lord God, may you strengthen them and may you comfort them like only you know how. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So Acts chapter 4, verse number 1. Um, this chapter is specifically about Peter and John. Um, Peter had just healed. I did a miracle um, in the name of Jesus Christ to heal a man who was lame. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it was so amazing that it, it caused... Uh, people to come to hear about this Jesus experience. But not only that, um, it also caused a certain level of opposition uh, as well, which we will read about here in just a second. Verse number one, now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word believed and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers and their elders and the scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and many as were of the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked Peter and John, by what power or by what mean or by what name, rather, have you done this? <clears throat> then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well? Who made him well? Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel <clears throat> that by the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By him, this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become now the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, 
For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we, by which we must be saved. I'm going to ask you a question. How do you, how do people know you are a member of your family? How do people know that you are a member of your family? If you're thinking like me, I would say that it's because I, I have the same physical attributes, characteristics as my mama or my, my father. I may look like my mama and my daddy in some ways. Others may say it's because uh, you may share and work in the family business um, that associates you with that particular family. Sometimes when I go back to my hometown, and you know how it is, every now and then I may see a friend um, of my father. And my father, who's passed on, is crossed over now. But when they see me, it was as if they seem earnest. And they would say, boy, you look just like your daddy. Likewise, People knew which disciples had spent time with Jesus. This is a powerful chapter. It shows the evidence that the Jesus experience will change you. Peter and John had been with Jesus. They had talked the people about God's grace, just like Jesus did. They had taught them to believe in Christ because he is the Messiah. He is the son of God. They taught the people that Jesus Christ gave his life for them and he was crucified because of their unbelief. They could speak from experience that the Jesus was dead as dead can get for three days. And it was by the power of God that raised him up out of that grave with all the preeminent power over all flesh. See, these men had come in contact with the Jesus experience. They watched Jesus heal people. They watched him raise the dead back to life. They watched him feed thousands and thousands of people with just a, a, a snack, amen. In spite of all the glorious miracles that he performed though, nothing compares to that resurrection. That resurrection changed the disciples' lives forever. You imagine Simon when he had a chance to touch the wound of Jesus. That Jesus experience changed him. You imagine Peter who denied Jesus three times. Oh, to know that Jesus hadn't given up on him. That changed Peter. These men walked with Jesus after he was resurrected. They saw the nail prints. They saw the, the, the prints in his, in his feet. They touched him with their own hands. They even stood there on the seashore. Can you imagine them standing there? Tears would have been rolling up in their eyes. Their hearts would have been sad at the same time, full of joy to see that their Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, was rising up into the sky, up into the clouds, never to return back to earth in their lifetime. Peter and John were here uh, making the case. They, they had experienced Jesus like no other. And this experience had taken their faith to a whole new level. And the result was a greater and a deeper commitment uh, to the mission at hand. And that was to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ into all of the world. Peter and John were making the case for our Lord here in chapter number four. They got people so keyed up and interested uh, to know more about Jesus, the Jesus experience cause, and it caused this disturbance in the city. And the Bible says that the priest, the guard and the temple and the Sadducees became so enraged that they laid their hands on Peter and John and they threw him in the jail. You see, sometimes, oftentimes, in this walk, when we truly commit ourselves 
to Jesus, to the Lord. Great opposition will arise. Even though we cannot physically walk with Jesus like Peter and John did in their lives. Today, people still should be able to observe and to know that Jesus is with us. Amen. How did they know that Peter and John had been with Jesus? Keep reading. Let's keep reading at verse number 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were um, uneducated and untrained, in other words, they were just ordinary men, they marveled. Some translations must say they were astounded at these men and they realized what? That they had been with Jesus. That boldness to speak the word of God was what our Lord and Savior did. Wasn't he bold as he stood before the governors and rulers? He wasn't scared at all, was he? Oh yes, we have a, we have a, 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 a suffering servant as our Lord, but we also have a mighty, mighty ruler as well. There's one indicator by which people will recognize you and I that we have Jesus with us. That indicator is by our boldness to share our testimony of how God has changed our lives, how he has saved us. A testimony is like a spark that comes right before the igniting power of sharing that great gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans 1 16 tells us for it is the power of God. It is the, the vehicle in which God saves mankind. Often before, oftentimes before we get to the point where we can teach that one-on-one -on -one Bible class, people want to know what Jesus has done for you. People are not going to buy anything that we're selling until they first of all hear how that thing has changed your life. You see, Peter could tell them how he forsook Jesus, but how Jesus continued to love him. John could tell them how Jesus even loved his enemies. But you know what? All of us have testimonies too. Testimonies of how God has shown up to rescue us in moments we thought we were all by ourselves. We have testimonies on how God has provided for us when we thought there's no way we're going to make it through another day. It is these testimonies that people need to hear that God is a real God. People need to hear it wasn't by our wit, by our experience, by our money, what we've done that got us through our troubles. It was only because of the power of the sovereign God of heaven that got us through. You see, in our world right now, uh, Senator Grove, people are afraid. They're scared. But at the same time, they're more conscious than ever. This is a time for us to lift up Christ Jesus so he can draw people to him. Everybody has something to say. Everybody has something to say about what we should be doing, what we should not be doing, what's going to happen. You see, as Christians, we can afford to let this great opportunity get by us, slip by us without making the case for Jesus Christ. People need to hear that anything outside of God's will for our lives will eventually turn to ash and dust. People need to hear that as the world tries to figure out what's next, that the Lord can return in the twinkling of an eye to judge their souls. People need to hear that Jesus will one day send his angels. He will come and he will judge this world. He will judge those who do not know God and those who have not obeyed the gospel. People need to hear uh, that Jesus Christ can save them and keep them saved. Only if, though, if they come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that he is truly the son of God, they must believe it with all of their heart. They must have faith. They must, they must hear from you that, uh, that they must have faith, that God uh, is only pleased to, with those who have faith. Do you have faith enough to believe in him? People must hear the message that uh, all they have to do is repent of their sins. They have to turn to God. People need to hear the test, your testimony, how you turn, how you repented 
um, and turn from the ways that you used to have. And you begin to now uh, seek after the Lord with all of your heart. People need to hear your testimony. They need to hear how you have confessed, how you stand up for Jesus today. They need to hear how you always not, you haven't always done it, but they need to hear how you have grown to that point now. People need to hear your testimony and how God reset your, resetted your life in baptism, that you now live as a new creature, filled with the spirit of God. And each and every day, you struggle, but at the same time, the spirit of God that is in you is empowering you to overcome things day after day. And, and every day you begin to resemble Jesus a little bit more. That is the Jesus experience. In my conclusion, Center Grove, be sure as your family members, as your friends, uh, as you meet strangers in the streets that talk about all about what's going on in the world, what's going on in the news on CNN, what's going on uh, in the White House, you be sure to remind them what is tell them what's going on in your life, how Jesus is is providing for you. I mean, how God is providing for you every single day, how God is strengthening you in times uh, like this, even in times of COVID-19, how God is still God and sovereign over your life. That's what they need to hear. And be bold. Make your case. Be bold like Peter and John did. Be bold. It may, it's going to bring some oppositions every now, but you keep on being bold. You keep sharing that testimony. And guess what's going to happen? God's going to get the glory. And you know what else? People around you, they will be drawn to that light that shines through you. May God bless you. May he keep you. And may he give you peace. Amen.